Chafing Armor Podcast, Episode 86, Donnybrook. back to the Chafing Armor Podcast. I'm your host and lovable Dungeon Master, Michael Corley, and with me tonight is Lee. Lee, tell everyone who you will be playing. Okay, everybody, I'm Lee, and I will be playing Osukai, the shifter reacher who is apparently having a birthday party. Ah, da, 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 it's my birthday! <laughs> when we last left uh, Osukai, he had a very strange dream involving laundry. Check the last episode <laughs> for more on that. Uh, he awoke to find a drow trying to kill him, finding that it was actually Zuana, the uh, drow who had traveled with him for uh, many months uh, during your early adventures and had been separated from you in Massgate to go and help some uh, scaled uh, drow in the Underdark. And she had reunited with you in the city of Zintel Keep to the north. And she had invited you out into the woods. You had gone far out to find a bunting, an underground uh, bar, essentially, where uh, the non-human races, the races who would be killed on sight, uh, are allowed safe passage. Uh, in this particular bunting, that includes shifters, where you are allowed in along with the drow. You pass by uh, several non-human characters, including uh, Quagoth, uh, the werewolf-like uh, creatures of the Underdark, only to see that you are met at a table by Captain Jackson. Uh, Lee, would you very briefly, instead of me doing it, tell everyone who Captain Jackson is? Captain Jackson played host to my consciousness for, in-game, about an hour? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um... Uh and as a result, uh, part of, I believe I ended up crawling out of her or something. I can't quite remember the details, but essentially because of that uh, particular uh, turn of events, uh, Captain Jackson is no longer human, fully human. Uh, the experience, we now share a common bond in our shifter heritage. Uh, whether or not I awakened it in her or through some supernatural magical circumstances of, of what happened, my shifter essence transferred to her. What kind of shifter she is, I don't know. But yes, when Osukai, Osukai died, uh, thanks to a zombie shark, she played host to his consciousness thanks to the machinations of the goddess Lolf. that is all correct uh you you spent a time in her noggin and as a result uh she is now a shifter and uh she had been the captain of the good ship piss whistle that had taken you across the sand swallow seas so it is a slightly surprising to see her here as opposed to uh captaining the piss whistle Indeed. and she gestures for you to sit down at the table and a, um, a actual troll uh, comes up to the table. It is completely impossible to tell if it is male or female. And it says, Want a drink? Yes, why not? Why you want? Uh, what would be the strongest thing Osakai could actually tolerate in a bunting? It's not going to be the strongest drink, because there's a lot of stuff in here that's could definitely drink him under the table, even with his relatively good constitution. But what's a good drink for someone who's not going to be drinking Everclear, for example? Uh, there, there, is a, there is a kind of orcish mead that is just, like, pure alcohol. I mean, it is, uh, like, a normal human might just go blind trying to drink this. It rides the uh, line. Yeah, yeah, and and it, uh, it's actually what the the orcs just call it mead. When they say mead, that is what they're referring to, and it is legendary. And, and humans have died trying to drink it. Uh, you know, like ah, oh, I'll be fine, and then uh, yeah. Dang, yeah, dead. I'll grab a I'll grab a uh, a mug of that. 
Okay, and it, it, the the troll kind of squints its its black black depth eyes at you and uh, shrugs and heads off. Uh, you see that uh, Captain Jackson has a tankard uh, which he had slammed down a moment ago, and it, yep. as far as you can tell, has normal beer uh, type in it, but it's it's impossible to say for sure. Um, and uh, Zuana also orders a uh, elven wine. Oh, and, nice. Uh, they she, the the troll shuffles off. And uh, Jackson says, so how the... Or she she kind of stops. She starts to say something, and she stops. She goes, what the hell is wrong with your hair? <laughs> right. I was I was dark-haired when we last saw each other. Um, so I died again? I was like, I would just say it matter-of-factly. I, I died again. And she bangs her... The, the, and like, like half of her drink sloshes out. She goes, there it is. You, the whole reason you would meet you, you already died. You don't die. Nobody dies twice. That doesn't even happen. Well, I mean, in stories, of course, but like <laughs> nobody I've ever met. Uh, well, you've met one now. I didn't huh. plan for this. It's just apparently death doesn't want me. I. I Trust me, if if that last time could have been it, it would have... I, I just, you know... Look, I just came back from the astral plane where I nearly died again. <laughs> just... She, like, it, it, like, she's apoplectic. Like, she can't talk. She's just like... D -d 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 what? She goes like, you know... I, I uh, Hold on a second. You understand that I regularly pass by the uh, the sea that it, that has a kraken and this is not normal for me Usuke simply reaches out and takes her hand and says Look, you're in a different world now <sighs> and and as she uh, as you take her hand uh Zuana le you know like leaps forward and pushes you both away, and she says, How dare you touch my bear? And then simultaneously, Jackson and Zuana start laughing. <laughs> um, uh, and they just, they just, they, like, they can't, they, they try to hold, like, the, the pose for a moment, and then they can't. They just both burst out laughing. Uh, and it is, it is very just a slight confusion going on right now. Like, <laughs> I, uh, uh yeah, Zuana says, yeah, it has been most enlightening. Apparently, you have left some of your memories with Captain Jackson. And she just smiles and tilts her head slightly at you. Oh. Um, and, uh, and, and they neither of them, they just smile. They don't say anything. They just smile and look at you together. Oh, uh, good. Michael, please just stop taking me back to high school. Jeez. And and with that, with that, your drinks arrive. The 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 tall, thin glass of uh, elven wine and this tankard, and like the 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 second it, it hits your nose, it's it you, you feel your nose hairs curdle at the uh, the the draft that hits your nose. <laughs> After that particular uh, turn of events, that that that. Uh... These two women at the table with their knowing, glimmering smiles. Oh, so guys, just gonna down the t <laughs> down the mug. Down, okay. He's Make just... a a fortitude saving throw, sir. Okay, thank God, fortitude is one of my best. Ha! That's a twenty-seven. I rolled a okay. eighteen. Uh, so I was going to have you roll twice. Once to not throw up, and then another to not get drunk. But with a 27, you, you do both simultaneously. And you there is a moment where your body just goes, no, 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 no. But then you just, your, your, your shifter fortitude kicks in. And that, that incredible fortitude of your, of your ancestors kicks in. And you just, hmm. And uh, but at the same time, like, it's like drinking absinthe for the first time. 
Your body's like, yes. What are you doing? What are yeah, you? Yeah, oh, you're... oh. Yeah. Okay. You, you, there is a part of you that is just crying inside. <laughs> it is. It is just miserable, and you cannot imagine how how because this is just like Tuesday for an orc. Yep. Um, but but you 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 hold it down, and um, and they both kind of look at you like they they know what that is, and they're just like, mm. uh, and. Um, so Jackson starts to tell you that uh, she Zental Keep is not on a sea, but as most large cities are, it is on a river, mm-hmm. uh, uh, on a river system, and there has been a uh, tremendous amount of activity in Massgate, and uh, actually some of it was kicked off by y'all, in that they really wanted to fortify the city after the last attacks. Uh, there was the flames coming from the sky and demons coming out of meteors and a ship with a with a with a horrifying uh, 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 punchy McBeard face half mimic creature uh, and and a and a failed attempt at taking over the cemetery and a poop monster beneath a, a very important rich clan. I mean, all of that in the score of like a couple of weeks. Yeah, they might want to. They might want to build a couple of walls at least. Yeah, and and of course uh, nothing against uh, Kuris Vigil Fist and his folks, but they are mostly for show. Uh, and so they they have begun fortifying, and so she is actually uh, working with uh, Tix's girlfriend because uh, she is the captain of the Piss Whistle, and she's been ferrying some smaller ships uh, to and from uh, this area, bringing supplies back to Masgate. And that's uh, the the series of events that led Zuana and her to cross paths ah, and led her that's... to come here and then to seek you out when they found out, uh, by the way, entirely by accident that you were in the city. Uh, but they wanted to bring you specifically out uh, for a night out drinking. Of course, it's 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 been a while since I've seen both of these. Mm-hmm. Fine, lovely ladies. Why would I not? Like, especially uh, given like to... um, connection with Jackson. Yes, yes. Uh, and in fact, uh, given that, I would like you to make a quick spot check for me. Okie dokie. Ooh. Uh, one of these days I remember what I have for spot. Uh, that's a 19. A 19. Uh, you, when, when she laughs and, and uproariously and slams the down, she shifts slightly, you see that the inside of her vest, her sailor's vest, uh, you actually can see the knot that you had left with her. Oh, she's um, dead. Is, is, actually, is actually in there. She doesn't have it out in a place of prominence, mm. but it is on her person. She uh, keeps it close like, to her heart. Oh. Uh, actually, yes. That, that is exactly Oh, wow! <laughs> Oh. Yeah, yeah. Oh. That is, as I said, the vest comes back and then flaps back down, oh. uh, and you see that that is that is actually where it is. Uh, oh. And she says, "What the heck are you doing up here?" The last time I heard, y'all y'all had headed out to the Pensa Plains, where I assumed you would die because that's what happens to most people who go to the Pensa Plains. Well, I did, uh, well, but I got better. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give her the. I'll give them both the quick, I'll, as, Ozuka's kind of got a bit of a thing for Jackson, um, mm-hmm. that, that's probably obvious at this point, but he doesn't mean to, to do this, but he kind of directs most of his, his storytelling toward Jackson, just just because he's, he, he wants, he, he, he wants that, um, so he's not meaning to kind of cut Zuana out, and every so often he'll kind of remember she's there and bring her back into the conversation. But it, it, it is mostly talking to Jackson. But he'll fill them both in on the events that happened, the 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 animal changing and the the immense pain and the 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 fact that we now travel with was essentially a dragon person, uh, the the fight in the. The, the the temple of scales and the whole thing um, the the everything uh, the fall off the cliff and the incredible 
fortunate circumstances and unfortunate circumstances that led to yet another scrape with death and everything up to the point where we had arrived just outside of the astral plane once again with just a few more white hairs <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and uh, as you're doing that, the uh, the waitress maybe uh, comes by. Uh, do you... Wait, 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 maybe. Uh, there, there's no way to tell uh, with a troll, really. Uh, would you uh, like another drink? Uh, give me another. Okay, uh, it doesn't bat an eye. Uh, you're not even sure if it has eyelids, <laughs> and uh, makes its makes its way off, and. Um, uh, Jackson uh, has told you what, what she is up to. Uh, Zuana, somewhat more briefly, which is her way uh, yes. that you know her, uh, tells you that she has been traveling with Gan. Gan was the one of the uh, drows, the scale, who was actually about to be sacrificed when y'all were underground. Uh, you, unfortunately, had actually missed some of those adventures, but, but your character was there. Uh, right. And uh, she had uh, rescued Gan, and they had gone off together to uh, work to help free those people because the the scaled skin uh, drow are uh, a second class citizen, and that's bad enough to, to just be a drow in drow society. Yes, uh, but to be a second class citizen is the kind of thing where you get sacrificed. Oh, and so she has been helping them to uh, get free. There has been some disturbing reports. Not only have the Mind Flayers become more active than they have been in centuries, uh, but there is a new cult that has begun to spring up. Uh, now, it's primarily been seen above ground, but she's actually seen members of this cult uh, in the Underdark. Word is, is that they are more powerful than they... Because really, a lot of cultists are just fanatics with mm. you know shaved heads and weird tattoos and yep. maybe some magical powers they're they're not really that impressive spend most of but their the, nights stripped stripped naked smacking themselves on the back with yeah, whips and yeah that that is that is exactly that what you're imagining is exactly what most cultists are um but the the word is and her spies have this on fairly good authority is that they have managed to slay a dragon Oh. Like an adult dragon. Ooh, and, okay. Uh, that that makes them. That, yeah. Those yeah, guys actually going is, to sit up this time and like, okay, yeah, no, the, the, mm, okay, this is actually yeah. a threat. And she doesn't know what they're called, uh, but she knows that uh, their symbol is an eye, which she thinks is supposed to be a draconic eye, uh, and it just simply has. It has just got a like a scratch right through it uh huh. just like an ugly like a scar or a scratch just right through the eye uh but she doesn't know what their name is uh because she's never asked one because <laughs> she doesn't really try to get near them yeah that's probably a good call interesting yeah yeah i'll file that uh, information the... in the back of my head because you know i'm i'm I mean, if they're this dangerous, they're probably not going to go around wandering around with robes with that symbol on them, but mm -hmm. they tend to leave calling cards at least. So I'll keep an eye out for that. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll keep an eye out for that. <laughs> <laughs> I might not be uh, so, drunk, but I'm sure the alcohol is starting to affect me a little bit. Well, I would like you to make one more uh, for it. I'm assuming you're not just power slamming the next one. But I no, the, se like the second one, one I'll be I'll be drinking relatively. Yeah, I would respectfully like to make one this more, time. Uh, one more fortitude saving throw. Oh, thank God! Uh, yeah, that's a twenty-four. Ooh. Excellent. So you, Ooh. like you said, you are absolutely feeling the effects of it, but that you are not drunk and that you certainly are not, you know, sick or anything yeah. like that. Uh, you you sure feel it? Uh, oh yeah, yeah. So, this is this is not uh, this is not easy stuff to mm -hmm. to just uh, so down. The the, uh, the the that hideous goblin that led you down is is leading coming back down, leading a new uh, person as they walk down, or I should say, a new monster as they walk down, and uh, it accidentally gets just a little in the way of those uh, quagoths. 
Ooh. And uh, the nearest one just looks down and just, and, and you recognize this. This is, you're like, oh, that is familiar to me because it just takes its claw and just rakes downwards. Oh. And um, the goblin's not unprodigious nose disappears. Just in spray of blood. It, it literally rips off oh. the goblin's nose in a single swipe. And of course, just screams erupt from the goblin as it oh. as it holds its ruined face. I can imagine. And the, yeah, and the quagarth just just slowly starts licking its paw uh, of the goblin blood and the little bits of, of meat that are on it. And the, the rest of the quagoths just... <laughs> and they start taking each other. Actually, you, uh, you actually understand what they say. Most of what they say is in a strange uh, kind of elvish. Ah. Um, and uh, you actually understand. Some of it is elvish and some of it is... Uh, Underdark, which you know a little bit of from your time with Zuana. Yes, uh, but I, you don't. You don't really understand it. I know which way the train station is, <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> or how to ask the way to the train station. Um. <laughs> Ooh, uh, like that, and, uh, it, and when when that when that exactly when that happens, like the there is kind of like really bad music kind of playing in the background, and you know goes <laughs> to a stop, and oh, God, everyone yeah. looks looks over and then it, it then everything just kind of goes back and that's just that's just how things do mm. and the the goblin limps over to the uh, bar to like get a rag and just shove it into its face oh uh, but there's there's nothing I mean it's it's literally lost its nose yeah um, nobody knows and, where it went <laughs> well it, parts oh, of it now. parts of it went into the quagarth and some of it uh, went onto the floor and it's still there Um <laughs> uh, but clearly there's nobody who's going to heal this uh, goblin as it just uh, moans to itself in the corner and just shoves, like, filthy rags up against its oh, face. Oh, yeah. He'll... He's, got a new... He's got a new name. He'll have a new name in yeah, the morning. Yeah. If yeah, he survives to morning. If he lives that long, if the infection doesn't set in. Yeah. Uh, fortunately, infection isn't super uh, as bad in our world as it is in the D&D world, or you'd all be dead. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a long time ago. With that, there is a sound behind you. Like, and one of the quagoths is actually coming towards your table. And okay. you, you, the, the smell hits you first. It's not like stinky, stinky. It's, it's just that smell of animal, which you're very familiar with as it happens. Uh, but in the, the not so great way. Yeah. Um, and it um, it looks at you, and then it looks at uh, Jackson, and it says, uh, "Power has passed between." <laughs> oh, this guy will, in his slightly tipsy state look towards Jackson and and go maybe more later (laughs) Uh, I would like you to make a roll I would like you to uh, are you trying to like play this off as funny are you trying what what is your uh, Uh, it's a little bit kind of a little bit kind of flirty and cheeky towards Jackson and just trying to diffuse what I'm thinking is could lead to a rather nasty situation since this guy is made a very very conscious decision to come to this table um Mm -hmm. so Uh, yeah so i i would allow either uh diplomacy or if you'd like to try a performance uh, Uh, either one of those let's try i mean they're both both charisma based yeah both of those are terrible roles um all right we'll go with diplomacy okay both of those are they're all the same so it doesn't really matter mm-hmm. uh, nat 20 okay thank you very much dice <laughs> appreciate that um, that could have gone really badly <laughs> um 
Not that it matters because yeah, skill it, checks don't it, matter, but yeah, it, that's, that's, it's a flat well, twenty because I don't have any bonuses. Yeah, it, it is. A, it is a, even though they don't matter on a skill check, I still take them in account. Is I I still say that something a little 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 langyap as they say in uh, uh, Cajun, a little something extra happens when you roll a natural twenty on a skill check. Oh, um, nice. And so with the the extra being that it pauses for a moment, it has these tiny beady little eyes that are looking at you and, and there's a moment where you're like oh crap I've, I've gone too far <laughs> and then it just bursts out laughing it's like ha, 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 ha. and it looks over her and it is there is just a very unpleasant leer as it leers at Jackson and it goes ha, 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 ha. I was I will move closer um, and uh, you know in a horrible, possessive nature. Just kind of, you know... He's a, he's a bit he's a bit on the tipsy side. He's like, he's, he wants to claim his territory, as it were. Um, and is also kind of, you know, hoping Jackson is on the same page, as it were. Um, but is also well and truly conscious of the fact that uh, Jackson is very capable of taking care of herself. Um... Especially now that she has some extras under her uh, under her skin, as it were. She was very proficient as a human, but now she has some extra stuff. Uh, I I would assume in her travels she's learnt some new things. One would think time time passes for all. You've all leveled up. Yes. Um. Okay. Uh, are you trying to intimidate the Quagath, or what is your uh, goal Actually, I, towards the Quagath, yes, I will, it will be intimidation. Towards, I, I'm, I'm hoping towards Jackson, it's, it's again, a little flirty. Um, I'll roll my okay. intimidate check for that, though. Oh, nice. Uh, that's a 26. 26. Um, Wait, hang on, sorry. Yes, 26. I can do math. 18 plus 8, uh, that's 26. <laughs> so, with the 26 roll, uh, there is that you bring forth the, the bestial part of yourself, and perhaps you shift, I don't know. Uh, but uh, you aggressively, you know, position yourself between Jackson and this uh, Quagarth, and you actually make this creature take a step back which is something. Uh, it is probably not quite as tall as you, but it is much thicker than you, wider than you. You um, dummy thick? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it dummy <laughs> thick. Uh, but it, it does take a step back and leans back, and it says, So this is your woman? And you actually feel the anger from Jackson behind you when he says that. <laughs> oh, I swore, I swore that the alcohol was more than likely going to make Osakai say yes. But Osakai also knows that she would probably kill him. And, and, and... <sighs> Osakai will, will turn to her and go, she's nobody's. Least of all, yours. Uh, give me one more intimidation check. Okie dokie. Uh, that's a nat 20, but... Hmm? Yeah, 28. Perfect, perfect. So he takes uh, a step back, uh, and you just, you just flat out intimidate him. In fact, tell me how you intimidate him, because you absolutely do this time. Uh... The alcohol has a slight effect on this as well, but while saying it, uh, there is a sh definite shift to into the, the shifted form, and, and it's only for a it's it's more of a punctuation, but the alcohol is affecting his slight control over his his shifting ability. But the al so he is using it as a sort of a lean forward and just turn into the the, the bear and just go. No, and then sort of shift back 
just that little, just that little extra oomph, uh, just let him know exactly what he's dealing with. Um, okay. Which is obviously, you know, someone who's not quite as beefy as he is, but bigger and, and with a lot more um, force behind his words, it would seem. Yes. Uh, and the, with that, the Quagoth steps back and um, he says, I am Erdan of my tribe. And I welcome you to this. And he's, uh, you think he's about to say um, bunting. And uh, that is when Erdan is stabbed in the back by a certain goblin. And um, he actually, he rolled a seven, but he has advantage because it's a backstab. And he rolled a natural 20. Uh, So you just see Erdan stiffen and blood begin to come out of its mouth as one of its lungs is punctured. And it does not die, but it is gravely injured by this staff. Uh, This expert, this expert uh, thief, rogue, uh, goblin who has come up from behind and is just has nothing less to lose at this moment <laughs> and has just driven a long knife right into its lung. And uh, all hell breaks loose. The, oh, all yeah. of the Quagars rise up. The other members draw, uh, of the parties draw their weapons and a bar fight breaks out. Yay. And Osokai, uh, shifter ranger from the Eldine Reaches, I would like you to roll for initiative. Before we do that, Osokai will... Mm-hmm. He's, he's, he's feeling it now. He's, mm-hmm. he's, he's, got a bit, he's got a bit in him. He's, there's a fight coming, and he's, he's really quite... He takes... He just, he just takes it. He just leans in, pulls Jackson in, and gives her a massive kiss before she can do anything at all and then turns and gets into the fight with a wow okay that's uh 21 21 wow uh i didn't think anyone would beat the uh 20 uh that i got with one of the other characters but you actually go first so uh tell me uh what what is happening is everyone is attacking everyone else Yes. Particularly the it's free the for all at this point. <laughs> yeah, the Quagoth are attacking, is attacking your party because they didn't quite understand what was happening. They just saw Erdan come over here. They weren't really paying attention. Yeah, and, and then they saw he's... him get attacked over here. Uh, yeah. So they are coming for you. Um, uh, but uh, yeah. Uh, all right. Well, let's just. Let's just go for it. Uh, Osuke is going to shift and go for the first one. Uh, the one that comes closest. Uh, which I'm okay, assuming well, is the one who's already been stabbed, but let's go for it, it anyway. It is. Yep. Okay, it is. Uh, I'll just... Ro- it's roll to hit with my claws. I'm going for... I'm going to finish him. I'm going to try to finish him off. I don't know if it's possible, but we'll go for it anyway. Mm-hmm. Uh, ooh, that's a 17. 17 will hit. Dookie. That's the first attack. Uh, that's four damage. So that's max damage on the claws. Okay. Uh, the uh, second hit. And I'm sorry, what is the total damage, you say? Oh, uh, six, sorry. Six damage, okay. Wait, sorry, no, no, uh, eight, because it's eight. lost my strength. Yeah. Okay. Um, and my this second not attack significant because he's already been badly yes. injured. My second attack is a nat twenty though. Ah. Okay. Uh, so describe to me with that second attack how you kill Erdan Quagoth of the Underdark. Let's go. Let's let's go ham. Let's let's claw uppercut. 
like like uh, Vega from Street Fighter. Let's just <laughs> push up, you know, uppercut with the claws, just straight through his chin, and just all of our strength and power behind it, just <laughs> roaring at the same time. Let's go for it. Roar! Beautiful, beautiful. And uh, even in that moment, in that those weird little twists of fate, uh, a large portion of its nose is just torn <laughs> clean off. Yes! Uh, and, and from behind it, the uh, the little goblin um, that is known as uh, Varuis uh, goes, Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Uh, just, just, you, you hear like, that's what you get! You know, just <laughs> screaming in this horrible common. That's brilliant. Is it the same one uh, that I tapped on the head? That would be great. Yeah, no, it is. It absolutely oh, is. Oh, yes! It is. Yeah, it was, it was in the process of leading new people down when it accidentally bumped into bumped into them right yeah uh, that's, so yeah, that's yeah, cool it uh and it and uh, erdan falls over dead uh that will bring it to jackson and a uh, purplish hued quagoth has just landed in the center of your table and is doing Ooh. that you know like trying to intimidate and jackson does the thing where uh, you roar at it, and then they just roar back. back. Yeah. Uh, and as that happens, she shifts, and uh, you had forgotten like just how bestial she can look when she does that, and her clothes kind of strain a little bit against her. Uh, but unlike you with your claws, she pulls out her uh, scimitar, which is her uh, traditional weapon of a pirate and yes. a sailor. And she brings it up in a slash. I would have loved if Jackson was like a level 10 and was just able to just roar and just immediately <laughs> gut him straight up. And was just like, that's my girl. <laughs> uh, well, she she gets a uh, unmodified uh, 16. So with her bonus, that, actually, that absolutely hits. Oof. And um, so she does uh, nine points of damage with her scimitar to nice. the uh, purplish one. It's, it's a good hit. And uh, slashes up and cuts into it. Does and, she have two attacks as well? Or? Uh, she does. Thank you for reminding me. Unfortunately, she rolls a two, so oh. that doesn't go quite as well. But uh, so he he stumbles back on the second one, and uh, that actually brings it to. <laughs> I, uh, I just I just wanted to just like slash up and just go. Didn't your mother tell you to keep your feet off the table? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and that actually brings it to Varius. Um, I'm sorry, yeah, Varus. Uh, however I say it, it's that's how it is. Um, <laughs> uh, and uh, they are actually trying to cut the legs out from under of this uh, purplish uh, quagoth, but unfortunately they miss. Uh, they also get a six. Two sixes in a row, that's lovely. Um, and that will actually... Um, oh, I'm sorry, I actually skipped Zuana. Zuano actually rolled a 20 total nice uh so she was actually just under you so she actually would have already gotten to go she gets a two um uh so she well actually that doesn't actually matter because she stamps her staff on the ground her sharpened staff and uh vines grow up around the table to wrap up and so he needs to make a reflex saving throw and he fails nice uh so uh, she, he is actually entangled in these vines. Uh, we'll have to free himself, which is brings it back to your turn now. All right. Uh, I'll. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just gonna go ham on this because, you know, it, it, it's a bar. Also goes with someone he's kind of had a thing for for a while. Hasn't seen for a while. Mm -hmm. He's just gonna, he's gonna wink and just go. Nice, and then. <laughs> turn and attack the one that uh, the little goblin was going to go for or was going for and missed. Well, in, in that case, it's, this is all the same one. Uh, there is, I mean, like I said, there's just utter chaos all around you. Okay. Yep. The one that's that's near you right now is this purple one. Alright. Uh, yeah, let's just go for the one that's, that's tangled up. Yeah. Go for um, it. Uh... First attack is a 16. That will hit. It is flat-footed right now. So it does right. not get its dexterity bonus. That is a 4. Okay. And second hit is another nat 20. 
Okay, another wow. nat 20. Um, which brings me up to eight damage <laughs> with claws. Uh, um, claws okay. Yeah, and, and again, with, with every major, I guess with every major sort of Critical strike. I was just going to roar. He's just mm. putting all of his power behind it and just slamming his these really quite heavy sort of claws. Long, thin, kind of, well, thick. Almost sharp, but blunt at the same time, if that makes sense. Like, he doesn't mm-hmm. sharpen his claws. They're just... But they'll do the job uh, and just sort of rend through flesh. Just sort of... Rawr! Uh, it, it rends quite well. Uh, this one is not dead yet because the other one had already taken, uh, you know, critical damage from behind. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but uh, you you have you have done a tremendous amount of damage to it in just a few strikes, uh, and that will actually bring it to uh, Zawana, who has been circling, and you actually see her pull out her long blade, and she strikes, and you recognize this from the other one. This is absolutely the attack of a uh, backstab. Oh, yeah. Uh, she, she has been angling herself. And she hits twice. 23 points of damage that she does. With nice. Hits back nice. To back. Uh, so she just comes in and just goes whoosh, and the second one whoosh, goes right through its throat. Um, and technically I think you're only supposed to get double damage from the first strike. Uh, but regardless, that's enough damage to kill it. Uh, Ooh, yeah. So the second one, the second one goes right through the neck, and you just see it kind of, <laughs> and then it just collapses in a heap, uh, partially held up by the vines. Anime like spray of. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely, <laughs> just dark blood spraying she just kind everywhere. Of tears the the blade out of his neck. <laughs> uh, and now you find that y'all are now as as you flanked this one who jumped in the middle. You are all now being surrounded by these Quagoths uh, because there were almost a dozen of them. You mm-hmm. killed two, but they are now surrounding all of you. And uh, would you like to say or do anything uh, as this is happening? Uh, um, I'm. I, I'm. <laughs> I'm going to tear off my tunic mm-hmm. and roar in just this like I'm I'm going for a mass intimidation. That's what's gonna happen. Okay. That's what I'm going for. All right. Um, <laughs> Twenty-eight. Twenty-eight. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> listeners, imagine uh, this this uh, shifter just tearing off his tunic and exposing his his hairy bare chest to the universe as uh the these horrifying bulking werewolf like creatures bear down on him and he just roars and they're just like what um <laughs> uh, and they, they just don't know it, like it doesn't make sense no matter how powerful you clearly are you are no match for this many people mm-hmm. and uh they don't understand where this bravado is coming from and that's actually what gives them pause and uh, as you spend your turn doing that, Zuwana is is circling next to you, and Jackson is at your other side. And the um, very injured uh, Varus uh, Goblin is is kind of stumbling near you, and y'all are kind of making trying to keep from being flanked. This foursome um, of 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 this <laughs> weird looking foursome that just wandered into this bunting. Three have wandered into the bunting, and one's just kind of there because it's <laughs> yep, kind of yeah <laughs> uh and that's when you, you they for a moment think you've roared again they that you hear this roar from behind and a bear not a shifter not a lycanthrope An actual bear a actual brown bear with Ooh. streaks of white in its fur and blazing red eyes just rears up behind one of them and just boom comes down and uh even though he had an opportunity to stab uh this dark furred almost black furred quagoth uh a drow skirts in front 
between coming between you and uh, the Quagoths is a young male drow clad all in black armor, plate mail armor, with a faintly glowing longsword. And it says, come, let us do battle. And it begins to engage the, the black Quagoth. Uh, and you, you're just like, okay. And that will actually bring it to Zuana's turn. You, you've caused all of them to keep from advancing. And uh, Zuana stamps down her staff one more time. And just a swarm of bugs come up on uh, one of the others. And it just screams as these, these like, biting ants just swarm over it. And it's just like, ah! And you see them, like, getting into its ears and its eyes and its mouth. And it's horrifying. Is she a uh, blight druid? Because those are awesome. Uh, she might be. She might be. You've never asked. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's not come up in conversation. I'm kind and, of sure I want to know at this point. She's just... <laughs> yep. And uh, Jackson is leaping forward with her scimitar, and she is attacking the one that the bear had brought down to the ground. She's attacking that one. Uh, unfortunately, she rolls a four, so it's just the middle of the melee. She can't quite get a hit. She does have two attacks. No, the second one does hit. Uh, yes. And so she does, uh, unfortunately, only uh, four points of damage total, but she does hit it. And uh, that will actually... Uh, Varus rolls a four. Uh, man, <laughs> this, this is just insane. Sometimes well, his poor insane. his poor nose. He has he has a really nasty injury on his face. That can't That's be true. helping matters much. That's true. Uh, and and like I said, there's all. I mean, just imagine the 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 beer steins flying freely every oh, which yeah. way. Just total chaos going on. We're just concentrating on the big things going on right now. And and he's um, and he's shorter than everybody else. So he's just there's, there's lots of bodies crushing around. The poor the poor guy's doing the best he can. Uh, and so. Uh, that is when you actually are struck from behind. Uh, there is a sneak attack on you as one of these Quagoths has uh, come up from behind you. And uh, it, you feel the claws just rip into your back. Uh, and it does uh, 23 points of damage. Ooh. Yeah, it just, you, okay. you feel this hot burn as your now tunicless back <laughs> oh, is yeah. uh, ripped into. Uh, and you remember, like, oh, yeah, these are actually just straight-up killers. Uh, oh, yeah, that yeah. will actually bring it to your turn. All right. Sorry, let me just uh, do some basic math here, because I'm terrible. Okay. Wow, he did nearly half damage. Once. One hit. Um, all right. Well, it's revenge time then, I guess. Hmm. Uh, just gonna, yeah. Uh, nobody makes me bleed my own blood. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I love that line. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna turn around and and beat the snot out of him. Go for it. Nat twenty. Nice roll for damage. Double everything. That's an eight. Okay. Uh, this is a problem with claws, right? It is. It is a problem. Uh, but you turn and just slash back at it, forcing uh, this one back. It has a, a, a like a blood red uh, fur, which matches nicely the blood that's sprayed on it from your back. <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, we'll go for another one. Uh, I'm going to go for the eyes. Okay. That's another nat 20. Mm. Okay. And that's eight. Wait. Yes, eight. Okay. I don't uh, like this D. I don't like this D three by the this D four by the way. Well, with it that has, natural. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Uh, it has like because it's, it's three sides, but four numbers. Mm -hmm. All three sides except one. All sides except one have a four on the bottom. I feel like that's a bit weird. Like I can't. I can almost not avoid writing a four, and I say that in roll two. But yeah, so that's an eight again. Hmm. 
Um, and you, uh, you actually feel your claw hook into one of its eyes as you slash sideways, and there is the spray of blood, but there is also the spray of vitreous as one of its eyes is just torn out of its head. You actually uh, reduce this creature to zero hit points, and now uh, I forgot to do something before, which we'll just say we, we'll, we'll skip over, is uh, Quagoths have an ability called Wounded Fury, which Ooh, is when yeah, you okay. reduce them to zero hit points, they are allowed to make attack against you. And uh, he gets a 19. Yeah, okay, that'll hit. Uh, and with his uh, literally uh, dying breath, um, that was actually fortunate that it didn't roll as high as it, nearly as high as it could have. Uh, but it does uh, six points of damage to you. Oof, okay. Uh, as it falls uh, bleeding and dying uh, with one of its eyes torn clean out. Um, and uh, Zuana, so this guy's not he, doing so well right now. <clears throat> nope, nope, that, that, that hurt. Uh, what you see is that the bear who slammed one to the ground, as it slams it to the ground, you see it actually assume humanoid form, and a, a female drow comes out, and as, as she comes to her form, her clothing and everything, is, as these druidic spells work, uh, reappear on her. She unhooks from her belt a mace and swings it around and cracks the side of the skull of, uh, of the Quagoth that she's fighting. And you just that hear mace a... looks familiar. You know, it does. It does. Uh, it looks it, real familiar. <laughs> though there's almost there's almost the faintest glow about it, as if at some point it had been enchanted, uh, mm. as it cracks into the side. And the male drow, uh, unfortunately, rolls a seven, even with his impressive bonuses, does not hit as he's battling with a long sword. This other, but it can't quite get past its armor. Uh, Zuana. Ooh, she rolls a one. Let me get my quick percentage here. Uh, ooh, nope, just a regular miss. And, um, oh, I'm sorry, she has two attacks. And then Jackson hits twice. So Jackson does, oh, nice. Get uh, it, girl. 17, 17 points of damage. She just downs the one she's attacking, driving her scimitar up through its belly, uh, and there's that, there's a, <laughs> as she yoinks it upwards, and you you just feel viscerally it go through its intestines as she <laughs> brings it out. Uh, that old uh, saying, I, I will cut you from guts to garters, oh, yeah. is uh, is very much in evidence. And that she is, uh, she is a uh, ship captain, and she's had to fight some pretty bloody battles on the open sea. Mm. Uh, and with the enhanced strength of a shifter, she is... Uh, fordum, formidable foe. Uh, and that will actually bring it back to you. All right. Um, again, you know, we might be in a fight, but he still wants some. Um, nice hit. Nice hit. Mm. Uh, and yeah, uh, I guess who's next? Um, well, you can attack uh, the one that Zuana is engaging in right now. It's a, a, a dark brown fur, the one that she is fighting, or you can engage uh, one of the two. Um, you can engage the one that the male drow is fighting. Is also relatively close. Let's go with that one, yeah. Let's go for him. Okay. All right. Uh, all right, that's a 17. Okay, that will hit. Okay. Uh... That's three damage. Okay. And a 19. Three. And that will also hit. And that's three damage as well. Three damage. So uh, in quick succession, you do six points of damage. Um, he brings uh, along his longsword and uh, just uh, crashes it like... like Using the the 
flat of the blade, actually, and just crashes it into the side of the Quagoth, sending it spiraling to the floor. And uh, and he takes uh, the point of the blade and brings it up next to the snout of the Quagoth, and he says, Yield! And the Quagoth just makes like a uh, sound like a like a wounded. Did he puppy. just? I was like, did he just fear fart? What? Uh, he he, he uh, yeah, You're pretty sure he might have pissed himself. Um, and he turns up and he looks at you, and you are looking into the eyes of Telen, the young drow that you had saved so long ago, and. He repeats back to you the thing that you told him, which is, we let them go because that's what we do. The rest, now that the fight is out of the Quagoth, now that they've had a sudden loss of nearly half of their numbers, they... Morale's going to... Morale's gonna yeah. break, and it's gonna. The morale yeah, okay, breaks. Let's go. They, they, they're, they're not. They're not actually. There's. No, there's nothing. There's like no homeland or anything. This is just a bar fight, and they realize, yeah. like, wait, like five of us are dead now. Uh, they break off and they scurry out the top of the uh, uh, bunting, leaving their dead behind. So Osukai, Osukai is not the same as he was when he met these guys, and he's also a little bit tanked up. So he's mm-hmm. going to make a. Like a, uh, I, I say he's gonna gonna sort of make to go after them, um, okay. With the, okay, idea, like, with the idea that I'm thinking that you know the the, the drow guy will just go, hold on a second, what are you doing? You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, and and you are you are absolutely right. He goes whoa 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 whoa, and he grabs hold of your uh, shoulder, you know your shoulder, and kind of pulls you back uh, with some difficulty. He's he's quite strong, but not your strong. Uh, but he's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And, and then the uh, Brindle, who is the young uh, female drow that you also had saved uh, those many months ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, both of them uh, kind of come back and like, whoa, 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 come on, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. You're, you're, you're kind of banged up there, buddy. Um, and they sit you down and uh, kind of calm you down a little bit. Uh, yeah, the, the, I, the, the the wounds are gonna the wounds are gonna start uh, taking their toll a little bit. It, I, I am it goes pretty hurt. Like alcohol mm. only goes so far, and now that the adrenaline is kind of wearing off, uh, he'll he'll allow himself to be kind of pulled back. Um, and they, t- t- they did we win? <laughs> they they laugh and they go well. I think so because we're none of us are dead, and uh, uh, Verus the uh, goblin goes, "Speak for yourself!" and he, he puts his the rag back to his his ruined face, and um, uh, I'll I'll toss him the remains of my clean tunic. Okay, he he gladly takes it and, and uses it. Kind of, kind of, he 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 sort of ties it across his face in this horrible band-aid uh, but it, it <laughs> in a, in a, in a, el bandido kind of yes yeah he, he looks like he looks like he tried to put on a bandit's mask but put it on at like a 45 degree angle uh, <laughs> it looks it looks ridiculous but it actually is is better than what he was doing before uh, yeah. and uh, Telen is he's actually very sorry he says I I'm, I actually feel really bad but uh, uh, we we did not get here without incident, shall I say, and uh, both of us have already used our healing uh, that we can at this time. Uh, though um, uh, Brindle does bring out, she has a, a, a berry that she offers to you that you can eat if you would like. Uh, yeah, why not? Okay, uh, it, uh, you he'll, have he'll... healed one hit point. Yay! From this berry. <laughs> um... You feel a little I will, bit better. I will a little bit better. I, my stomach is not as not as empty as it was before. Um, so he'll, he, Osaka is. It's been a while, but Osaka recognizes. He's pretty sure he recognizes the mace, even if it's a little different. He's like, "That's mine." <laughs> and she laughs and she says, "Yeah, we we have been fully adopted by the the wood elves, and uh, there is actually a." 
ceremony that they are able to do that will enchant uh, magic items. But more than that, and she kind of she kind of pauses and and she she looks a little embarrassed. Is it it has to be something that's important to you? And uh, she kind of squeezes it a little tighter, and uh, Telen kind of pats her on the shoulder, and he reaches into his uh, chestplate armor, and he pulls out a uh, carved boat, a boat that you remember him using to stab I a uh, that. drow assassin in the back <laughs> that of the head. Was, it, that was so cool. I remember uh, that. Yep. And his, and you, you actually, even though you are not magic, you can recognize the faint aura of magic around it. It has also been enchanted uh, and gives him plus one to armor class. I remember um, you, kids. <laughs> uh, it's hey, you, been you, a they, while. And you, uh, you all hug. They, they hug you. Uh, they, you can tell even in these short months, they are so different. Like mm-hmm. being out of the Underdark and being out of the influence of the Drow society. Uh, they, clearly, they will never truly lose all of what makes them Drow. Yeah, but uh, just being in an environment where they are loved and cared for, and also not insignificantly that they have found a patron god, uh, a good god who has uh, given them both purpose, turning them from respectively an assassin and a dark cleric to a paladin, a drow paladin, which is almost imagined, unimaginable, uh, and a drow druid. All the Drizzt fanboys are losing their minds right ah. now. <laughs> yes, indeed. Indeed. Yeah, I can't um, stand that character. Um, anyway. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, they're, uh, they're very happy to see you. Osakai is not one for tears, but he lets one go a little bit. You know, ah. these kids these these kids were important to him. He, they were the first kind of... It was one of those first times where he was just like, you know what, something's got to be done. This, mm-hmm. this can't and- stand. Uh, and not not just that, and and you and Tix were both instrumental in this. But if you remember, it was Zuana's plan to return them to the Underdark. Uh, That's right. Perhaps because it had never occurred to her to do anything different, and it was at you and Tix's insistence that they not be returned to this fate worse than death. Yes, I remember. Uh, that. And so it was it was because of you, and she reached out to her contacts uh, in the Wood Elves and uh, found them this home uh, because of you. And uh, not, of course, least of which that you successfully led them past this um, uh, attempt to kidnap them and, and then a, an attempt to assassinate them. Yeah. Um, th- that was because of you. Uh, and they have clearly not forgotten that. And the fact that both of the tokens that were given to them, the mace and the boat, carved boat, uh, have become basically totems for them that have both been enchanted. Here we'll Osakai will hug them both very tightly and then point out the bows in his beard that indicate that are that are for both of them. Oh, and they, they so are incredi- incredibly I have my that. I have my own mementos. <laughs> they they laugh and they uh, they call over for uh, uh, ale or I'm sorry, for elven wine to be brought. And uh, y'all uh, drink well into the night. Os- Osukai uh, will push his luck a little bit and attempt to pull Jackson onto his lap. Okay. Uh, go ahead and give me a... Um, ooh, I'm trying to think of the best role for this. <laughs> uh, uh, let's go with... I mean, persuasion. Uh, well, there isn't a persuasion in this one. Uh mm. You have them. Mm, no, well, I just feel like uh, I feel like perform is probably the best one for this. Yeah, I would I would absolutely allow perform. Right, that's good with that. Come on, dice, don't fail me now. Yes, that's a nat twenty. <laughs> Uh, so describe to me how you how you bring this about. There's music playing. There's drinking going on. This is several hours later. You're you're wounded, uh, and they they both uh, Telen and Brindle have patched you up, have have binded your wounds, but you are uh, wounded. 
which of course just makes you even more, uh, you know, pathetic. Yes. If you might yes. Say. <laughs> well, you know, uh, also a little bit less inclined to watch out for his own safety, as it were. But yeah, I was like, I would just sort of kind of reach out and just grab her by the forearm and just pull her in onto his lap and, and, and you know, look deep into her eye and just go, good fight. Well, mm. good fight. <laughs> uh, and um, she, she laughs and she gives you like a peck on the cheek. Uh, she she doesn't you know like lean down and 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 kiss yeah, you hard yeah. but she she gives no. you a peck on the cheek yeah and laughs. Osaka okay, takes that as a win. That that's <laughs> he'll take that as a win. Just kind of yes. Well, there's there's always the next night and finally <laughs> exactly as, uh, as dawn is starting to approach uh, the the three drow in your group need to make plans for that. Uh, there yep. is a nearby entrance to the Underdark. Obviously, neither of the uh, uh, Telen or Brindle want to go there. Uh, yeah. But they do make uh, arrangements. There are sleeping places here in the Bunting. Uh, yeah. Because many creatures that come to Bunting don't do well with sunlight. No. Uh, and, it is, it uh, is so essentially an inn for the, the, yeah. the unwelcome. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, by the way, in a bunting, technically there is not supposed to be any fighting. It is never observed. Yes. No, of course not. <laughs> it, it, it is the official rule that there is no fighting in the in the bunting, and it is never observed. I can imagine the, um, the ogre server was just like... <sighs> oh, not again. Uh, just start, just start. Uh, fortunately, the ogre is, is an amazing uh, uh, carpenter and just starts making new furniture for the next night. Playing uh, touch up to the lipstick. Yeah, yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Uh, so, with that, uh, is there anything particular you want to say before you head back to the town? Uh, the, the plan is this: is that uh, later Jackson is going to head back. She needs to talk to Zwana actually yeah. uh, because they need to make some plans because of some she wants to pass along all of the information that Zwana has on these new cultists yep. and also wants to see if there's anything that she can do to help the, uh, the, the drow oppressed uh, by spreading word uh, back to Massgate she's going to be heading back down towards Massgate by river uh, in a few days Okay. Uh, and um, as I said, both of the twins are going to stay here at the Bunting. Yep. Yeah. Um, twins. Sorry, that's not the twins. That's Garrow and Meryl. Yeah. Uh, Ozukai hugs everybody very, very tightly. <laughs> he's, you know, he's very happy this happened. You know, it was a bit of a surprise, but he needed this. He needed a. He needed. A, uh, he definitely needed an outlet for his uh, his frustrations. The fight was. It was dangerous, but he had a really good time. He really enjoyed himself. Um, and, you know, he's... Uh, he's gives everyone a massive hug, bear hug, as it were. Uh, mm. Wishes them all fantastic journeys on their way. You know, winks at, winks at Jackson. Still thinks she's into him. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, was, uh, sort of... Pats the, pats the goblin on the head, um, and just says, "I want to do this again in the future. I needed this. Thank you guys so much. And I hope to see all... you in the next city, if not before. I'm staying and... at, I'm staying at the this this inn, in the city. If you guys can make it." That would be amazing. Otherwise, have a fantastic journey. One for the road. Ah, this one final. You definitely should not have this, uh, but you do. Uh, you have one more for the road, uh, and you had even switched to a slightly less horrifying drink. Oh yeah, no. This still... is this is just plain out beer at this point. Just, right, right, right. Just, yeah, beer. Still, you, you still are super drunk by this point. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, and I'm not even going to need to make a roll. It's just I mean, because that is what you are. I'd have to be to keep trying with Jackson. Come on. 
<laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, so, um, the, uh, the inn, by the way, that you are staying at is called the Bobcat's Paw. Right, yes, I'm uh, staying, so I'm staying there. <laughs> I'll be heading back to the Bobcat's Paw, and, uh, Jackson gives you a hug. Zuana actually does give you a hug. It's very chaste and very stiff. Yes. Uh, but it's still a hug. And yes. uh, she says, remember to take care of yourself, my bear. In a... Remembering the very first encounter with, with Zuana, being pulled down into the earth when she summoned a bear and ended up with me... Um, He's he's drunk. He doesn't know what. He pulls out his grappling hook and rope and just hands it to her. Hmm. In his mind, it's just a remembrance of pulling the steam thing off the wall in front of yeah. the the enemies, the goblins, or whatever it were that were there, and just getting. In he in his mind, he's just like, take it. It's yours. He kneels right. to do this. He kneels to do this. And then mm. just hands it to her and say, Thank you. And she she takes it and she you can tell she's actually kinda of touched and she's thinking about the moment where you gra you grappled one of the knolls and then yoinked it towards you and then killed it with the punch as it came flying towards you. <laughs> I remember that. And uh <laughs> takes takes the, the grappling hook and goes, Well, I will hold on to this. But I'm also taking my hat back. Uh, <laughs> I guy's I forgotten would... about the hat. He doesn't, yeah, he yeah. doesn't remember. Well, she's she's, she's totally kidding. Yeah. She's kidding, but she's also not kidding because she doesn't want to get murdered when she goes into town. Well, yeah. No, that's uh, true. Is the big one. Uh, <laughs> but she, you head your way out and um, uh, the virus, the uh, horrifyingly mangled goblin uh, takes you out and he... Uh, he kind of mumbles thank you <laughs> to you uh, <laughs> since you uh, uh, kind of saved him there. I was the guy will lean down, pull out a... How much have I got? Oh, I've actually got quite a lot. Uh, we'll pull out 10 gold coins and just drop them in his hand. Pat him on the head. Not say a word, just pat him mm -hmm. on the head and just stumble back to town. He is utterly shocked. No one ever gives him money that he doesn't, you know, take off their corpse. Um, to and... Osaka's mind, he just tipped him for his service. It's like, good fight. Thanks for, <laughs> thanks for showing me to my seat and showing me out. And... Cause it's just to hear it's just like, you did good. You did good. It just, just doesn't matter to him. He's, he's tanked. <laughs> it doesn't to me, this isn't just a goblin this is like a little serving boy you know he, he doesn't think he pulled out 10 coins he think he pulled out like 2 but mm. yeah, yeah. yeah he's, he's kind of got the count off but it's like oh, here you go here you go here you go. Uh, that's some coins yeah. uh. <laughs> um, and he, he just is stumbling back through the woods it, it, like I said it's about an hour walk it takes you at least an hour and a half or oh, more yeah. to make yeah. your way. You get like, get lost I'll, a few I'll, times. I'll, I'll stumble down and every so often have to take a leak and against a tree yeah. or or, yeah. or a cow or whatever. <laughs> um and uh just just so you know, your um uh chop has been wandering about the yep. uh uh just wandering about and comes back, wandering about comes back. It it obviously is not with you right now. Yeah. Um as you make your way back uh, to the city. And it, it, the only reason you make your way back is because you can see the lights of the city, even though it is still pre-dawn. Yeah. Uh, you can see the lights of the city, and that's what lets you kind of get your way back towards there. Navigate uh, by it, torchlight. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the city The city actually, even though it is a keep, uh, the, the walls are pretty ornamental uh, because the city has been completely razed in the past. Yeah, um, and so it 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 really focuses on other defenses than city, so you can just kind of walk back in. Yeah, and yeah. Um, you're making your way back to uh, the Bobcat's Paw, 
and uh, you stop and I'll be singing a I'll be singing the okay. chicken hat song. Oh yes, yes, yes! At the at the uh, top of my lungs, you know, which is gonna be a fantastic for everybody. But screw it, I'm drunk. I don't care. <laughs> I'm just gonna be singing a, <laughs> the, the 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 chicken hat song. Why not? Yeah, and you can hear, you know, his thumb. People are hearing his stumbles left, he staggers right. This is gonna attack a yep. chicken hut. And you you have heard this song on your travels, uh, which is oh, just yeah. insane. But as as we have just said, there is a river passage from uh, Zentil Keep to Massgate, and the bard Fugly has been singing the song, and it's been it's pretty catchy, and it's been it's been walking around, and then of course people have seen your chicken hut coming into town, and it's certainly inspired that mm -hmm. uh, as you're singing, and you look over the fields uh, with, that were in your dream, and you're starting to see the sun rise up um, in the east and it, it's kind of a nice feeling you know that you don't have anything you have to do today so you're going to be able to sleep in heal oh, yeah. up Absolutely. you know just relax and that is the oh. precise moment that a dagger slides into your back and you take 21 points of damage. Uh, okay. Okay. Wait. And what does that what does that do to your total? Uh, uh I'm uh, I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> it's minus 11. Uh, minus 11. Uh gone down to minus 10. As the blade slides into your back, there's actually very little pain. Whoever has done this to you knows their business, and the blade slides into your heart and pierces Osokai's mighty heart, and you fall to your knees. You don't even, like, your, your body is just losing its energy as you fall. You don't even have the energy to turn around. You are still looking at that sunrise. Um, do you think you would say anything? No. <laughs> I... I, I, I agree. I agree. Um, as you, you feel, you do feel your knees hit the ground, but it, it doesn't, there's absolutely no pain. You are, you are completely numb now. And you still see that sunrise. Do, do and... I get a death save? <laughs> oh, I, I apologize. I apologize. Uh, yes, you would need to roll your first uh, death save. I'm sorry. I was thinking minus eleven was. Uh, uh, when is it? It min death? minus minus ten is instant death. But I, I okay. I'm, I'm just asking. Uh, okay. Can oh, I get well, a death well, save? <laughs> you know what? You know what? I, I will. I will. I will allow it. Go ahead and, and roll. Uh, I'm dead. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. No, that's a one. A one. A one. So you fail your death. Should I, you should I roll my percentage die? Oh. Uh, why, why not roll the percentage die? Roll the percentage die. Okay. Okay. All right, Michael. I I need to take a photo of this. Please do. Please forward that to me in Discord, and I will upload it on the thing later. What What is that percentage die? 99. Oh, my God. And 99 is catastrophic. Um, it is the exact same thing that led to you being chomped in half by a shark. Yes, it uh, is. This is... Sh I, I, I don't know where this is going, man. I don't. I don't. I don't. Yeah. Well, where it is going is... As your vision fades, you find yourself walking. You are walking through that field, that same field from your dreams. And you're just, you are numb. You are um, wearing the same clothing you were before, but you have no weapons on you. You have no pack. And you're walking past all of those sheets. And you make your way to those gnarled, giant trees in the center where there is the two sheets that are just torn to shreds and in the middle is the shirt 
that was torn and bloody, and every time it flopped down and tss, tss, into the fire. I understand and, now. And she, the Raven Queen, is there, and she gestures to the sheets, and she says, "These, O Sokai, this is your soul." Your soul has been torn asunder. Your soul has been shredded by your unnatural return to life. People think that I am cruel, that I do not allow those to extend past their life as it should be. But a soul that continues when it should not is a terrible thing. And she takes the bloody shirt that you realize is just you. It's Osokai. It is your essence. And she wrings it, and the blood just gushes onto the fire, and the fire puffs out, and you smell that, that metallic smell fills the air. And she folds it perfectly, just perfectly. She holds it out to you. Osukai will take it. And that's where we'll end! Chafing Armor! Episode 86. Thanks for playing, Lee! Uh, 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 yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll hand in my sheet, I guess. Uh, I'll hand in your sheet. Uh, if you, the listener, were as equally shocked by this turn of events as Lee, uh, by all means, let us know about it. You can comment on the website. You can comment on our YouTube channel. You can send me an email, Mr. Corley, M-R-C-O-R-L-E-Y at gmail.com. Uh, let us know what you thought about this most unconventional episode. I... There is more. <laughs> there is more. Uh, in the distance, I can hear the sound of bells. And we will return with episode 87 to continue. Thank you again for playing, Lee. Uh, thank you. <laughs> and, uh, and, I... Mm. Damn, big fella. Yeah, right. <laughs> All right. <sighs> I mean, she's had it coming, but... Still. Okay. <sighs> All right. Goodbye, Osakai. Goodbye.